Welcome back, this is Yam the Jack, and today we've got Gunslinger Farmhouse Suicidal. It's day, it's, day, it's, day, it's, day, it's, uh, it's times like these that gives me faith in the random map chooser. You know, you get to you get to look at it and be like, yep, it didn't pick Ashford Asylum. So it's probably random. But then you also get to look at it and be like, yeah, but it like almost always picks Ashford Asylum. So there's probably some, you know, bias going on there. Um, Farmhouse, not a very good map, in my opinion. I've uh, I talk about it every time we play on it. I don't really like it so much. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. I do think it has my best thumbnail. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's got its good point. It's got its bad points. Um, not really a map that I like, though. I just don't like fog. I don't like fog. I don't like fog in any games. In, uh, in Minecraft, I got it disabled. I'm, uh... Whenever I have the opportunity to disable fog, I disable the fog. I just don't like it. And you know, you, you can say that it builds the, um... That it builds some kind of ambiance. That it builds some kind of, um... You know, environment. And it all kind of works together to, to make a, a wonderful thing of beauty. I disagree. I think it works together to build a wonderful thing of blindness and I already have enough trouble seeing as it is I don't need the fog to help me anyway when I was younger when I was uh, a wee little girl I'd go to uh, we lived next to an ice cream shack I just had I just recorded this episode and I like re-recording it so it's weird to be going over the same stuff again um, but anyway uh, I'd go over to this, uh, this local ice cream shop that we lived, like, right next door to. Um, and, uh, you can't come. No. Um, they, were, they, they, they sold ice cream. They sold Hot Wheels, I believe. Um, they sold hot dogs as well. And they had a little arcade place built into the, the, the area as well. Now, I've always been a very analytical thinker. I've always been a very logical person, a very logical individual. Um, and uh, when when we had... So there was this one game at, the, uh, at this arcade that I would go to and the ice cream parlor. This is one game, and it was, uh, you'd, like, put a coin, like, a quarter, into, um, my god, I've done poorly on this one. You put a coin into the, you put a quarter into the slot, right, and then it would roll down a, um, like, rail inside the, uh, inside the machine. At the end of the rail was this like spinning disc and uh, depending on what like hole you got it into you'd get different prizes the disc spun at a constant speed though so uh, <laughs> you, you'd kind of be able to put in a coin it would you know fly down the rail and then hit the the spinning disc at wherever it's going to hit. And then you'll be able to understand where the offset is between where you put the coin in, like what was at the end of the rail when you put the coin in, and uh, when it hit, because all of it was constant. You know, it was... Your know, gravity was constant, the friction was constant, the coins are manufactured to pretty, you know... You know, low level to pretty low tolerances. The, the machine itself is spinning at a constant speed. Like, it was all very deterministic. So I would always win. You'd go in and you'd uh, you'd do it once, right? And then um, you'd, you'd know the offset. Now you you win every every time you put it in. You win. You know you know you know the solution. You know it's something that you solve. It's not necessarily something you play. Um, so every time I'd go back, they'd change the uh, the like any kind of you know variable that they could, um, which was I believe. The uh, the angle of the um, 
I believe it was the angle of the rail, and then also the uh, the speed that the disc spun at. But it was always a constant speed. It was never, um, or at the very least, uh, it was always the same rotation over and over again. It wasn't necessarily always a constant speed throughout the whole thing, but it was always, you know, when you put it in here, you get it here. It was always deterministic. Um, so, you know, one or, one or two, you know, coins in, and you'd be able to, to pretty easily uh, end up getting it to uh, a win every single time that you'd put a coin in. So, you, you just go, you play this game, and you get, like, you know, a bunch of tickets for, for like, nothing. Which uh, was always fun. As a... That would have been eight. Seven, eight, nine ish. 16, 18 years ago, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. It would have been. Uh, I think they got rid of the machine eventually just because I was winning all the time. I was always winning. They didn't like that. <laughs> they, they like when people lose, right? Like, that's that's their whole jam right is, is it's all about the scams and that machine was not a scam at least not uh, the machine itself wasn't scamming uh, me now what was scamming me was the the tickets themselves you know weren't getting me anything of value right like e worst case scenario the arcade's not going to give you something more valuable for your tickets like no you win the jackpot first try, there's a pretty good chance you can go just buy whatever you would have wanted anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good fun. They didn't like me there. They didn't like me there. Um, their hot dogs were the best, though. I, I stand by that. Their their hot dogs are the best. Even to this day, I haven't had a better hot dog. I've eaten a lot of hot dogs in my life. I've eaten a lot of hot dogs. None of them compare. They just don't. There's something about the the uh, well, you know, you were talking about it earlier about the ambiance of the the ice cream parlor and the smells of of all the ice cream and everything kind of working together in perfect harmony to bring you the uh, the best hot dog eating experience you'll ever damn well have. Out. Nice um, we can the but uh, yeah, they were they were, they were like uh, fifty cents or something like that for for like a hot dog. Crazy, right? Crazy. I like being old enough now to to be able to say stuff like that. Cause these days you go to like a store, or whatever, you buy a hot dog. It's like two bucks or something, right? Two two fifty for like a hot dog. Maybe buck fifty. You you get you ain't getting a hot dog like anywhere for fifty cents. Rock and roll. But back in my day. <laughs> closed. Go make a difference. It's kind of mind-boggling being uh like growing up, go, growing older. Being an adult so is uh. Cause you know you don't feel different necessarily. You just you just you do. You are different, but it's not because you're an adult. It's just because you have age and experience and and time to to have learned and grown and become who you want to be, you know, or at least become who you are, not necessarily who you want to be. Um, so we want to put you like I like this. 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 Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, you have time to become who you want to be, or at least become whoever you are, and that kind of just, just gives you a little bit more wisdom, a little bit more, I don't know, understanding of how things kind of work in general. You don't really become an adult, you just keep getting older. Um, but it's kind of a weird thing, because I, I have friends who are 17, 16 even, not well... I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I have any sixteen-year-old friends, but sixteen-year-old acquaintances for sure. Uh, seventeen-year-old friends. I have. I have seventeen-year-old friends. People who I would consider to be 
not very close friends, but people who I would consider to be friends who are 17. Definitely a lot of 18, 19 year old friends. And I, I look at the logistics behind that, right? And I think to myself, okay, so, you know, 18 years old, so seven years younger than me. So when I was seven years old is when they were conceived or when they were born. You are here to clean out Zeds. You know, when I was seven years old is, is when they were born. I had friends, I had experiences, I had time, I talked and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's when they were just uh, coming out of their mother, you know. Um, but uh, then it gets weirder. Because you think, okay, you know, you take, you know. We're, we're going to do just some napkin math to make it a little bit easier. These aren't, I, I, I know... Okay, so you take a year off for the pregnancy, right? So we, we say I was six when they were, you know, conceived. Let me look at the data, okay? We look at statistics. I don't know what the statistics are, so we're going to pretend like we looked at them and then guess at what they'd be. Oldest child in a household, 20, or oldest, you know, Back back 20 years ago, right? How old were people when when they had children? Typically, like, you know, 20s or whatever. And how long were they in a relationship before they had children? Or had had kids? I would I would take a guess that, you know, 20 years ago, the majority of people who were, you know, planning on or trying to have kids weren't in a relationship for six years. Which is to say this cat's back in the that game. when I was born probably there I mean there's there's a there's a decent chance that some of my friends' parents weren't even together yet. Which is like crazy to me. <laughs> That, that that I could be older than some of my parents or some some of my friends' parents' anniversaries. It just it just it's, it's, it, it it messes with my brain sometimes, man. It messes with my brain sometimes. I like being older. Well, kind of. I like I like getting older as on like the principle of the thing because uh, I feel like as I grow older I get more mature and I learn more and I you know I get to have all that experience and and kind of um, just grow as a person into to who I want to be and and uh, you know gradually slowly become happier and more accepting of myself and who I am. But the the trade off to that is that uh, you know if I could go back to, to when I was 12 years old I absolutely would because. I, I think I'd largely be happier right now if, uh, you know, I, I was able to, to transition a little bit earlier. I think, I think I'd largely be happier, especially if I was able to just, you know, be born in, you know, a woman's body initially in the first place, you know, so this whole mistake thing just didn't have to happen in the first place. That would have been pretty dope. Um, so, you know, the, the cost of uh, being happier as I grow up is that I have lasting uh, trauma and mental health issues from... Um, growing up, not as necessarily who I want to be. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the other sides of that, if you look on the brighter side of things, is that as I grow older, that matters less and less to me, but it also kind of puts me farther and farther away from being able to experience those things that I'd like to be experiencing, especially with COVID happening and all that. It's kind of really putting a wrench in it. You know, I was... I was I'm, not, uh, I'm not defining myself by it, but I was kind of expecting to be married at this age. Or at least in a long-term relationship. And I'm not even in a short-term relationship, so... <laughs> uh, haven't quite lined up that yet, but... You know, I, don't, I don't think that I have to be uh, married or in a relationship to be fulfilled or, or happy or whatever, but... You know, kind of... It's something that I wanted to have, you know? And it's something that I don't get to have. For, for reasons that I just don't get any control over, really. Which is, um, no fun. No fun at all. But, what can you do, right? What can you do? Not much. Cry at night. That's about, that's about it. 
I don't really cry at night that much. I used to cry at night. It used to be like a nightly thing for me. But, uh, you know, you get into bed. You fluff up your pillow. Stick your face into it. Ball your eyes out. Wake up in the morning. And, uh, pretend like nothing happened. That's that's the life of a uh, of a trans woman before she's uh, she's learned to accept it. a trans person in general. I'm assuming trans men. I'm I'm sure have similar experiences. Um, until until you've learned to accept yourself, it's kind of just uh, you know hell. But you do, and then everybody's happy, sort of. Sort of, kinda. Not really, but you know, we, we pretend to be. <laughs> it's not really depression that I have. It's it's more of a, of a lack of fulfillment. But what can you do? What can you do? I'm past the depression. I was depressed until fairly recently, but marijuana and exercise both helped me with that. So now I just have a, a lack of happiness. And I can, I can fix that one with with uh, with marijuana as well, but I, f I feel like that's a that's a less healthy thing to be working on with uh, with with uh, you know any kind of substance. I feel like that turns it from substance use to substance abuse, you know. So at that point, you're reliant on it. You know, you're not happy without it. That reliance is what's dangerous. Anywho's, anywho's. Enough about the depression. Enough about the depressing stuff. Oh my god, I just whiffed all of those. And I think I just whiffed all of those as well. Did I just whiff on both of them? I think I did. I thought that was a scrake. I was gonna go bash it. I was gonna go bash the damn rock, dude. I was gonna go bash the damn rock. Oh my god. Oh my god. I haven't been working on my voice as much as I should either. I haven't been working on that as much as I should. I think I'm at a point where it's pretty good, though, right? I think I'm at a point where it's pretty good. Um, we'll 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 knock it out here real quick. I haven't I haven't done it in a few days actually. Um, let's see if we can see if we can do this here. I got a few new subscribers, and there's a lot of people out there who a just don't even know that I'm a you know trans woman, uh, and then b have never heard my beautiful you know feminine voice. It's a little bit hard to do while I have all this kind of stuff going on. That's kind of why I... Uh, I hate husks. I hate husks! I hate them. I at least accept them because they're, you know, original killing floor stuff, but... The Edars are just husks, but worse. I I hate this. I hate, I hate this! Come on! No. No. Yes! Oh. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll try the voice here, okay? So, you have to kind of work it out a little bit there. And I think that I have it where I like it right now, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't get to hear myself right now, so it's a little bit hard for me to verify that it's what I want. But it's something like that. Something like that, anyway. Something around there. I got, I got work to do on it. I haven't been working on it. Been lazy. Been lazy. So it's hard to, to make those final adjustments and then and then get to a point where it's like a consistent thing, you know? That's the part where I'm kind of at right now, and it's just uh, not fun. <laughs> I used to have fun when I was working on it, kind of. No longer. I'm no longer having fun. It's now just tedious. And uh, embarrassing to a certain extent. Because I have to like, start using it is the, is the next step, right? I have to start actually using it. When I talk to people and stuff. And they do kind of, but... Shoot me, dude. Shoot me. Nah, you're done. You're done. You're done. You don't, you don't stand a chance. No, we can do it. Yeah, boy. 
Matriarch, a, it's a tight fight. It looks like we trivialize it, but we are moments away from death and despair on that. It's a close fight. I got this terrible... You might be able to hear it. That's my hair. It's a knot in my hair that I'm trying to unknot. My god. Anyway, um... Eat more ice cream is the moral of the story, I guess. Thanks for watching. That's going to do it for today, though. Thank you for watching. That's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video, like, and subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.